This is the Social Security Administration's Help America Vote Verification System. And uh, we have you here, Congressman, so I'm curious your thoughts on this. This Are, are you familiar with HAVV, Help America Vote Verification? Yeah. So we've, we've tracked this for a while. Choose a week, and this is going to show you people who have registered to vote who do not have an ID and the outcomes. In the week ending June 22nd, 2024, the state of Arizona had 47,928 attempted registrations with no ID. 11,374 did not have a match in the system. 13 were dead. 36,536 were found to be single matches and alive. Now, we don't know how this is happening or why it's happening or why the numbers are all different. What the SSA says is that this is only for when someone makes a registration attempt and has no ID, the DMV or the MVA, whichever, whatever you call it, can submit their, their name and the last four of their socials to see if they're in the system. How is it that Arizona had 11,374 attempts where the name and the SSN did not match? Something doesn't seem to make sense. I mean, 47,000 people in a single week? That's a lot of people to register to vote in a single week. Maybe that's normal. But you look at other states, California, 2,000. Why are we seeing such large numbers? Now, this has been going on for a long time. 211,419 in the United States with 35,982 having no match. Certainly, some of these people may have written down the wrong number or the wrong name or the name was spelled look, wrong. It look at Tennessee. Typ typed in wrong. Tennessee, zero. Yeah, of course at it is. Zero, zero, zero across the board. Is a great, does a, Trey Hargis, <laughs> the guy's name, he does a great job. I served in the legislature. Oh, West Virginia is also zero. Missouri. West Virginia. Take a look at this one from Missouri. This is, uh, what do we pick, April 13th. Missouri has 46,938. Now, Texas, which also has insane numbers, 24,000. Thousand coming back with no, with with no match, and hold on, four thousand four hundred ninety two are dead. Now, how did five nearly five thousand people who are dead submit registrations? Just we, that we, we, plague, you know. There's there's been no answer for this. No, there is, and and it's not even being brought up by members of Congress. I don't know what the answer or the solution is. Perhaps there needs to be. I think if you look at uh, February seven, let's let's see, maybe February twenty seventeenth. I'll try and find this one because it's been a while since we covered this. Yep. Missouri has 23,253 dead people attempted to register. The answer for this that we get is that they're doing voter roll cleanup. Totally fine. OK, sure. But then how would you have 6,000 non-matches on your voter rolls? Doesn't seem to make sense. Texas denied this and said, we don't know what you're talking about. We did not register this many people. It's not happening. This uh, the SSA website for HAVV says it's only for when someone registers. So it's so it's perhaps it's being misused. We're hearing a lot about the SAVE Act, illegal immigrants voting. But you'll notice it's it's a lot of these border states, Missouri. Border states, 100 percent. Arizona, 31,000 attempted registrations. What we know is that when someone comes to this country illegally, the Biden administration is granting them work visas really, really quickly, mm -hmm. which grant them Social Security numbers. Let's say that these individuals don't have any idea how this country works, don't know what the laws are. So they go to file their paperwork for their work visa or for their work permit or whatever, and they get automatically registered based on their information, whether they wanted to or not. In several jurisdictions in Maryland, in California, New York attempted this, got shot down. D.C. does this. Non-citizens can vote. So what happens? Allegedly local races only. Mm -hmm. but That's what they say. That, allegedly. But, yeah. but too. Now, here's the point. That's not. They're going to have to register to vote, right? Correct. And then when they go to vote for their local elections, they're given one ballot, right? And then they end up voting on everything. That's correct. If we do see non-citizens vote en masse and Democrats end up winning, there will be no audit. There will be no fact checking. Okay. And there will never be a way to figure out if this really happened or not. In Bush v. Gore, they pre-filed lawsuits. What happened in the last election, President Trump's people, there are five law firms in the country that specialize in this, that are the the king, you know, they're not. They're the go-tos. They're not $45 an hour attorneys. Mm -hmm. they, they come in. And in Bush v. Gore, they had pre-filed lawsuits in a lot of these areas, Chicago, areas we knew that there'd be stealing of, of elections in the past to keep it from happening, this, the hanging chad, all that crazy yep. nonsense. And 
this is what we've got to do this time. This admin, the, the Trump Trump folks have to have these people under contract and ready to go. They did not the last time. They treated it like it was a um, you know a talk show type thing, and you know they wanted to fight it out on the television, and they needed to be fighting it out in the courts. The, the, the Social Security Administration operates under the executive branch, or um, I do not know. It's the Social Security Administration, so yeah, aren't yeah. all the federal agencies under the executive branch? Yeah, right. uh, yeah. yeah, I'd say yeah, yeah. Is there anything you can do? I wonder if there's a simple letter that can be sent saying we're just ho- trying to understand what these numbers are and present. Um, perhaps you can give us some insight as to how these registrations come in. Is there something like that that you could do? Yeah, I could write a letter to any of them, um, but would they respond? And what do I have to hold over their head? You know, nothing. Subpoena? Yes, because subpoenas are very, very effective when they yeah. come from Republicans. Yeah. Is the, I, I, I don't understand how this is so blatantly obvious that yeah. there is something wrong here. These numbers don't make sense. They say it's voter roll. In some instances, instances, they say voter roll cleanup. So every week you're doing voter roll cleanup to the tune of 50,000 people. Yeah, that's a and, lot. And, and in some instances, we're looking at 20 to 30 percent don't match in the system. So let me, let me just get this straight. So let's uh, let's go to uh, June 22nd, 2024. And we'll jump over to Arizona, which matters significantly for this race. Yep. You're, you mean to tell me that 11,374 people on your voter rolls don't match with the Social Security Administration system? They don't reuse numbers. When your name and numbers in the system, you come back as deceased or alive. So if this is true, we can we can assume two things or one of three things. Arizona is registering illegal immigrants to vote and 11 uh, or or, uh, 11,000 didn't have numbers. We can assume this is voter roll cleanup and that Arizona somehow had 11,374 people on their voter rolls who don't have a Social Security number in the system. Mm hmm. Or we can assume that, I don't know, I guess there's an error of some sort and the numbers are being inputted wrong. I, I mean, know. if there's an error and it's happening this regularly, it's obviously a misuse of federal funding and taxpayers should want an answer for that. Right. right? right. Like either this system is broken and not working, so we're just spending money on something that is a waste, or there's something wrong. If there are 11,000 people that don't have matches, we have to ask ourselves why that is. I mean, you say this all the time, you know, maybe every once in a while someone mis- misenters their social security number. But 11,000 times, about 25 percent of registrants. Right. I think I would we've known not. this has been broken for a long time. I mean, there's old jokes about, you know, like dead people voting in Chicago. I mean, these are like this is standard. This is like, you know, a century old because of the way that the Democratic Party machines work. But this is and why they're just I think used the to being act- completely it, 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 unaccountable it, 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 and not having to answer for it. New York, 5,688 people attempted to register without an ID. 4,417 came back as non-match. So nearly, we're talking about 90% of those who attempted to register in New York have no match in the Social Security Administration database. New York, that has had several million illegal immigrants enter there. Yeah. New York, interesting. there's no need for, there's no voter ID. In New York, what you do is you just sign your name and your name has to, your name supposedly has to match the signature book. But there's been times when I've gone to like, because I used to live in New York and I used to live in Brooklyn. And before that, I lived in the Lower East Side. And there was one time on Lower East Side, this was the Obama election. I went to vote and the, um, there were these two old women in front of me and they were trying to vote and they didn't have ID and the poll workers were demanding that they show ID and the women were like, oh, I didn't know we needed ID and they were turned away. Um, And I was like, actually, you guys, you don't need ID. Like, you know, there is a law. You can just sign your name. It just has to match in the book. But I've gone to vote in Brooklyn and um, they can't find my name in the book all of a sudden. And I've been voting there, you know, I mean, the only place I was edu- ever registered to vote was in New York. So they were supposed bizarre. to the way that rule is supposed to work is when they come in and don't have an ID and they sign, they uh, they use a paper ballot. Um, but you don't need ID in New York. All yeah. you need is your signature. Yeah. Well, I'm saying yeah. with the city. Yeah. OK. But uh, the way that was supposed to work was in, in, in states that, that did that in the mm-hmm. past. If they didn't have an ID, they would sign up what they call a provisional ballot mm-hmm. and they put it off to the side and then the they would check their signature with the signatures they right. had downtown. And a lot of times they would never even have their ballots cast because if the base was just so, if it was a statistical, yeah, uh, there was no possibility of, of you yeah. know, them, then they'd bring them out and they would count them later. So it's a, um, 
it's actually a, it was actually an honorable process, mm -hmm. but it, it got abused, of course. And, and now with, with computers and, and our technology we have now, there's no, no shape, form or fashion way they should be able to steal an election. So also, we, we, we have particularly well, I will tell you this in Tennessee, our computers are not connected to downtown. They're not connected. I mean, I, I'm sorry. Our, our voter machines are not connected to the internet, any shape, form, or fashion. Well, they shouldn't be. They should not be. Well, they've, they've said that about many states, and then they found that some of them are actually yeah. connected. Yeah. Uh, so the week ending June 1st, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania had 104,250 registration attempts. 6,582 came back, no match, 87 deceased. 87 deceased, I guess, kind of makes sense. Uh, and 97,000. 563 had matches in the Social Security Administration database. That is a lot of people registering to vote. I just got to say, you know what I think is going to happen? Scott Pressler's hard at work in Pennsylvania. Sure. I think what's going to happen is Joe Biden and Democrats are going to win slightly, and they're going to say the polling was wrong. Wow. Or, or they swap out Joe Biden, and it's someone who narrowly wins, and there will never be an investigation into this. No. There'll never be an investigation into it. Um I think there won't be an investigation into it, probably even if Trump is elected. And I hate to be, you know, blackpilled about it, but I agree. the reality right. is that that it's just going to be something that is is thrown aside. Oh, we won this election, so let's forget about let's it. Let's forget I mean, about it. It's yeah, it's really that's what I say. We have very short memories. Yeah, one of our pizzas in thirty minutes or less, and that's about our dad gum attention. That's why uh, you had that meme from Arne McIntyre saying, "Lord, give me the Donald Trump that exists in the mind of delusional leftists." Absolutely. Because I'd love oh, it. If uh, yeah. I, oh. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, if Trump came in and was like, bring on Vivek, Vivek, start ripping through these these these, these systems and, and getting rid of the corruption. I was in the locker room this morning and a Democrat was, was early and he said, he said, Tim, I just I just hope y'all don't let Trump do what we think he's going to do. You know, and I mean, they think he's going to he's going to he's this Hitler esque thing coming in. It's just the Constitution's uh, there to protect us. It protects us all. The Bill of Rights. I mean, it, there is rules in place. This is not going to be that. If, but, you know, there's it's going to be law and order. There are Democrats that I view as paranoid schizophrenics in Congress who believe the psychobabble of the evil order givers. You've got Democrats who know they're lying and know they're evil. Nancy Pelosi, I think, is a despicable, evil human being. She makes money off of Congress. She lies about it every day. She's no, she knows she's full of it. She's vindictive. And she needs to just leave. She needs to get out. Then you've got Republicans that are complicit. They just allow it to happen. They sit because back. they got their piece of the pie, dude. Exactly. They, and they, and they do not care about the all country. The they yep. all they care about is them getting reelected. Completely agree. And so what you end up with is like what you said with this Democrat saying, "Don't let them do it." And it's when Donald Trump was in office, and we had the worst riots we saw in fifty years, and he did nothing. What did you? What do you? What did? You, what were you hoping? He, what? Do, what do you? What were you scared he was going to do? Were you worried he was going to roll out tanks and start arresting people? Because he didn't do that when they were trying to burn down federal buildings. What do you think he's going to do now? He's going to get in. He's going to he's going to get some appoint. Uh, uh, he's going to appoint some people who are marginally bad. We're all going to complain that he's got some good people, but then he hired some people who suck. Then we're going to get a marginally good second term, but it's not going to be enough to do away with the corruption that we've seen at the highest levels. And then what happens after four years? And I think so much of this is a cultural problem, right? Every time that our institutions fail us and every time we st sit here and talk about the fact that our politicians are making money off of, of being in Congress, uh, I think the American people are the ones who suffer. They become I, less enchanted <clears throat> with the system. I will tell you this time, I think he realizes it's, it's so big that he has to tear down these agencies. Department of Education. There's not one bureaucrat in Washington and D.C. that has taught a kid how to read in Claiborne County in, in East Tennessee. Well, they switched Shut the it. way that reading was taught, too. Yeah, I mean, they yeah, switched well, to like these I, ridiculous But my, my, my point, ways. exactly, because one because size does DOE, not fit all. Yeah, yeah went for it. You know, what works in Washington, D.C. or Los Angeles sure as heck doesn't work in East Tennessee. And so you, you shut those departments down, you send the money to the states, you hold the states accountable. And then that's where voters will hold the people accountable is in their states. And then these bad states will fail, people will continue to leave, and they will continue to uh, collapse. The same way with the um, Department of Justice, any of those agencies, when, just, just you take them and you go to the bottom level, the Pentagon, everybody down to a two-star general, out. Have you asked, you know, when, the, when these, this Democrat comes to you and says, don't let Trump do what you think he's going to do, have you asked any of these people, you know, because my response would be, you realize that y'all put 
Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon in prison for defying a subpoena. Right. And we won't even put Merrick Garland in prison for doing the same thing. Have you asked yourself? We won't even slap his hand. Have you looked in the mirror perhaps and asked yourself if you're the baddies? Right. Do, do they consider this? When you brought this up, I was thinking of Rachel Maddow, and she was like, they're going to lock us all up. And everyone's like, you mean the way the you thing are? you guys are already yeah, doing? That was really yeah. You're saying that you're you accusing are us of, of doing the- what you're already doing. Right. That's it, the constant thing that I hear. But, I, but it's because they know they do it. We got to remember when we get in power to, to act appropriately. I was in the state legislature for years in Tennessee, and the Democrats controlled everything. And then finally, we took everything. And I can remember when the Democrats, when I first got elected, one of the old House members says, boys, I was here when we took it over. I was here when the Democrats took it back and they fired everybody. And I said, y'all remember how this is. And sure enough, you know, we get we started that same old deal and we start this compromise stuff again. Compromises while we don't control the Panama Canal, while both ends of it are controlled by the Chinese, while we're $35 trillion in debt. Just go through the list of compromises that we've done. We need to start. The American public has given us a mandate if we if we are fortunate enough to win, as we should this time, unless we blow it. And we need to take full advantage of that because we are only going to have one more bite at this apple. In the history of the world, it always goes through oppression, revolution, some success, and then you figure you can vote yourself the largesse of the treasury, and then you start yep. all the way back around. It's never been where all we've done is delay it some, and we might have an opportunity to turn back that clock if we just had the guts to do it. Thanks for checking out this clip from TimCast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel, and we will see you all there.